I haven't done any research for this trip. Brenev has done all the research. So I'm really just acting as the translator and Brenev is the navigator. And I am really enjoying this experience. <laughs> and uh, there's somebody in the background who's speaking. Turn right onto Rue St. Julian La Povra. Who's speaking what? Ping in the park. There is a gentleman yeah, urinating yeah. behind us. Okay, I, maybe, I don't know if I've captured him on the video. I'm just gonna turn off the camera. Hi, welcome to my video. Et bien, c'est bien, Paris. Paris, mon amour. Amour. Well, friends, we have been on a stopover in Paris. Today is the end of our second day here. We're standing at the foot of Notre Dame de Paris, which is uh, probably the most famous cathedral in Paris, and it's where Victor Hugo set his uh, epic work. And I, you know, we're standing here looking at this gorgeous architecture, and all I can think about is food. Today, all we did was like hunt for the most delicious things and we started bright and early. Bonjour. Bonjour. Alors nous sommes ici à Paris. We're looking for the perfect baguette. What makes the perfect baguette, I think, um, is a combination of the crunch, the sponginess inside, the chewiness. I enjoy the air pockets inside my baguette. I don't enjoy being run over by a scooter, but I enjoy the walk to a bakery. The palmi, grain de courge raisin. Is that everything? Oui. Très bien, très bien. Yeah, not bad. Non, c'était excellent. Merci. Today we have, uh, it's our second day in Paris and we are headed to Notre Dame and the plan is after that we will be having something to eat there, see some architecture and then finally go to Marais, one of our favorite spots. Maybe we'll find some good eating spots and just enjoying what Paris has to offer. That's the plan. And I'm just so excited to be here. It's our second day. We didn't film anything yesterday. I feel like yesterday when we were here, I really just wanted to take everything in, enjoy being here in this city that we love so much, and I don't see. Thank you for doing this for us. Uh, no problem. It's charming. It is so beautiful. We've been here before about four years ago, but it's still really incredible. And uh, this, I mean, this is where Victor Hugo set his masterpiece, right? And it's such a stunning work of architecture. It's, uh, it's I think, one of the most beautiful churches I've ever seen.
We finished up at Notre Dame and we're on our way to another really iconic little French spot, uh, Parisian spot, I should say. We're cutting through a park. I don't know what park it is. Brenna is the navigator and uh, I'm just kind of like going along with it, which is strange because I speak French. Prenev does not really speak French at all. I haven't done any research for this trip. Prenev has done all the research. So I'm really just acting as the translator and Prenev is the navigator. And I am really enjoying this experience. <laughs> and uh, there's somebody in the background. Who's speaking what? Being in the park. There's a person in your... There's a gentleman yeah. urinating behind us. Here we are, we're at Shakespeare and Company Cafe and there's also a bookstore and if you've seen, what's that movie? In every movie, it's the After the Sunset. I mean, yes, this place. Julie Delphi. I think it's After the Sunset, after, um, that's not what it's called. It's like a really quick word before we leave from Shakespeare and Company. So we've made it here and if you have watched any of those films like After Sunset, After Sunrise, with uh, Julie Delphi and Ethan Hawke, then, then you're very familiar with this little pokey bookstore that is just so charming and so beautiful and you can't take pictures inside. I mean, there are signs like very prominently displayed that say do not take pictures and so we didn't take any pictures, not even a single one. People still love to take out their camera in a bookstore that says do not take pictures. They want to take pictures, which is funny that you're in a bookstore, you can read books, you can read what the signs are saying, but you still don't want to respect it? Yeah, you're not in a bookstore because you're illiterate. You're in a bookstore because you can read, which means you can read the signs, right? We're going to go find some food right now. Um, let's go. According to your recollection from yes. last year, you and think Hodor works in this shop? A look alike of Hodor and inside the shop there are only three places to sit. That's why everybody stands out, gets their order done and eats it out in this house. This is the place we came to last time. Yep. Oh, nice pepper. Oh my gosh, it's my favorite pepper. Yes, baby. It's that uh, pepperoncini. No, I'll put my own. It's okay. So you had a pretty serious deal there, buddy. I know. Four years ago, we ate the same thing. We shared one. Yes. But uh, now we have graduated. Pas aujourd'hui, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's Yiddish pastry, so it's like a... It's really that they're Jewish, but they eat this very similar kind of food. And it's like that Middle Eastern belt. I feel like cuisine is regional, yeah, I you agree. know? I agree. I, some cuisines are re regional, yeah, I would say. Absolutely. And food is such a unifying it is. Uh, point, it is. you know? I, I don't know how to say our it. Our favorite but... traveler and journalist, Anthony Broughton, wanted to unify people through food and to find commonality between differences that we are fighting over. Can I ask you an embarrassing question? Yeah. Why are you like frosting up the glass of this door when you just ate like a really giant falafel? You said you wouldn't judge me. No, I'm sorry. You're right. I said I wouldn't <laughs> judge you. I'm so sorry. Wait, while you do that, I'll just swipe your legs. <laughs> Better. Yeah. <laughs> it was chilly when we left this morning and this has turned into like a really cold, wet day, which is not entirely different from the last time we were in Paris. <laughs> but the thing about being in Paris is that you have to remember where you are, okay? Yes, it's cold. Yes, it just rained heavily. 
you might be a little bit wet, but the thing is, you are still in Paris. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, that is pretty spectacular. Hi, friend. I also just want to say that like even though we are standing here taking this amazing work of architecture and just in awe of first of all how many people come here on a on an hourly basis forget daily just hourly and we've been inside and it's gorgeous it stinks okay there are pigeons everywhere there are rats everywhere <laughs> i mean okay but, but okay the main the main thing is we're in paris and we're here for like three more days. We've already been here for two days. We've had like five days here, which isn't an incredibly, you know, lengthy amount of time to be in Paris because there's so much to do here. And this stopover was kind of like, we came on a whim, but um, you know, Paris is always a good idea, as they say. And uh, well, one of us does speak the language. Uh -huh. 